How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So let's make a game 2018 rendition where we work on Natural Explorers, a sim RPG using the RPG Maker MB engine. In this episode, we've got a lot of ground to cover. I've made a ton of changes to the project that I need to go over. But first, let's take a look at some of the comments that we've had. Demos Overkill has suggested that we change the game's resolution from 1280 by 720 to 1248 by 720 to better match the 48 by 48 tile set resolution, which is a great suggestion, and we'll probably be doing this. Keith J. Davies says we should show the remaining resources when consuming them via the gab window, which I've integrated, and you'll see. Hunter Thompson said we should make the graveyard record the Hall of Fame, the top scores, or make it like a leaderboard for past playthroughs. That's an interesting idea. Several other people have made comments and suggestions, and I'll scroll up so that you can see some of the changes made if you would like to pause and see everybody's comments. Very good constructive criticism and ideas from everybody. Thank you so much for your comments. If you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments below. I've also updated the quick notes because I've incorporated Yenfly's common event menu. I thought it would be a good idea to have a text file open with some plugin commands, comment commands on the fly so I can quickly copy paste and get my common event menu set up. So I have done that. Speaking of the common event menu, let's take a look at it. If you're unsure how to use the common event menu, it is very, very awesome. I think we should start by jumping into the game so you can maybe get an idea of some of the things that have changed. A lot of quality of life updates. I've set up the game so that the switches that are required to be on in order for the merchant and the monument to be displayed have been set to be turned on from the initialization event. But right at the beginning of the game, the player is going to be able to walk in town, set up the name of their town, and type it in and also go to the merchant and purchase things. I've added a new resource called Food Ration, which is going to be the replacement for meat and fish in a certain way. So you can no longer consume meat, which was the initially this was food, and then I renamed it to meat and, and also added fish. I've changed meat to raw meat and fish to raw fish, integrated an idea of requiring a kitchen to convert raw meat and raw fish into food rations. I've also made it so that the game requires the player to to provide food rations to the town in order for the town to produce money. In order to get money every 10 seconds from tax dollars, we have to provide food rations to the town. Food rations are gonna cost 20 coins if you wanted to buy them from the merchant, but you can get them from raw food from the farm or raw fish from the docks, take them to the kitchen inside the town. You can hire a chef or a sushi chef. For each raw fish or raw meat, you'll get five food rations. The value of raw fish and raw meat are set to 50 and food rations are set to 20. So just by converting one raw meat into five food rations, the player is going to double the amount of value they have because five times 20 is 100 and the ingredient is only 50. I've added the icon, which is number 832, as a gold symbol to every time I reference my coins, I'm adding more icons just to provide a little bit of eye candy. And I think it just looks better to have icons inside the text. As you can see, the gab window is keeping us up to date on how many food rations we have when we get awarded money. Every time we access the thing, we are getting notified of our current amount of money. However, I plan to just add a graphical user interface element to show us our money, which will be added at a later date in order to remove the you currently have in every text box. I've started us with 4,000 coins to be able to buy all of the resource gathering spots. We're almost out of food rations. I've incorporated Yanfly's button common events plugins. If I press the E button, the player is going to eat a food ration. The player no longer has to press escape, go to items, go to food and use it. You just press E and the player will consume one of the food rations. It will let the player know how many food rations we have remaining. It will also let us know what percentage of our food bars remaining. So I'll show you how I did that as well. But before I jump into that, I want to press the T button because I've bound the T button to Yanfly's common event menu. In this common event menu, I've got some common events showing every element in the town that as it currently sits. Right now we have a town monument which will be updated based on if we rename the town. At the beginning it'll say default town. This changes if you rename your town. If you access this, it does nothing yet, but I'm thinking about making this so if we press enter here, it can rename the town from anywhere, which wouldn't be too hard to do. If we access the traveling merchant, I could make it call a shop processing here. I kind of like having the player go into the town to access the merchant, so the player has to spend some time going to the merchant if they want to buy goods instead of harvest them. I do want to make the merchant have varying prices, but not yet. So you can see in the subtext on there, prices may vary, not yet, but eventually. And 
here's the new thing I've added the kitchen. I'm still looking for some artwork for the kitchen. I haven't found anything really good yet. So I just got an icon in the top left, a plate, a fork, and a knife. If we access the kitchen, we can hire a chef, a sushi chef to prepare food rations. We can actually hire both. The chef will take a raw meat and provide us with five food rations every three minutes. The sushi chef will take a raw fish and provide us with five food rations every three minutes. And we can have them both. When I select kitchen, it turns on the switch that calls an auto run that provides us a show choice that lets us hire a chef, hire a sushi chef, fire the chef or fire the sushi chef or make no change. If we hire a chef, it's going to be a little bit more flashy in the future. We've hired a chef, we've hired a sushi chef. I also want to provide some way of knowing what we currently have. But right now they're both hired. Also in town, I need to allocate a location for the kitchen. Also consider requiring some sort of initial gold cost to set up a kitchen, to set up a sushi bar. This is just a rudimentary beginning system for the chef and the sushi chef. Three minutes from now, we're going to be awarded five food rations for one raw meat and five food rations for one raw fish because they're all on their separate timers. But if we go in town, all of our timers stop except for our hunger bar and the town's timers actually continue to run. While we're in town, the outside world stops producing and the timers stop running. All of the town buildings continue to run. The town buildings should also continue to run if we're on the world map. It only makes sense. Nothing set in stone, but this is how it works right now. If we're on the world map, then all of the timers are activated. If we're in town, only the town timers are activated. Only the things that will be producing stuff in town, not including the gold. So I'm thinking about just pausing all of the timers when I'm in town, but then I have to think about why would the player want to go to town and what would they be needed to do in town? Should we pause the food timer in town? You know, a lot of questions still arise. Maybe you guys can help me that. I'm going to press E, eat some food. Oh, I've got a bug there. We can fix that. Try visiting the traveling merchant. We're about to starve, so we do have to go in town to buy food unless our chefs are producing it. But we need to buy some food rations right now. Press E. Okay, so the icon works for when uh, we have food, but the other icon needs to be updated. Now that we've had a look at the game itself, let's jump into the database. So for the items, I've only added one new item, the food ration, but I've changed raw meat and raw fish. I've removed the consumability of raw meat and the fish and renamed them. So they no longer call a common event. The common event is now called by the food ration, which you can use from the inventory or you can just press the button, hop key E, to make that happen. Of course, we're gonna have tutorials when it gets later in the game so the player understands what buttons they can press to do what. No new animations have been created, but but we've added a couple of new sound effects. Let's play those real quick. This is one of them. Your character is starving. <laughs> Your character is starving. So I've added that to our common event for Meat Bar. When we get down to only one, I should have just let that play out because we were almost there. When we get down to the last 19 or 18 percent of our health bar and we only see one Meat Bar remaining, it's going to play a sound effect and tell us that we need to eat food rations to fill our hunger bar or we're going to starve and also we'll get that audio cue. I've changed this hard hard clock counter to a global controller, which still adds to one variable that starts at the beginning and it just keeps running no matter what. This is how I'm handling if we pause a mine and we enter a village to pause it, but we come back out, but we want to keep it paused. How does the game know to turn it back on or off? Or what if we run out of pickaxes and it shuts it off? How does it know to restart again? This is a controller to keep things running without them just falling apart. Like if we run out of resources, here's an instance. We hire a kitchen chef. We run out of raw meat. When we get raw meat, the switch for him to run, for him to work, would already be turned off. So we need some sort of parallel process to say, hey, you're not fired, you're still hired, and we ran out of meat, but now we have meat, so this is going to keep him working as soon as we get the food for him to work, without having to go into the menu and set it up again. If the chef is hired, is on, and the party has raw meat, then turn the kitchen chef timer back on. And this happens for the mine as well. As I mentioned in a previous episode, if we go into the mine, after we've already purchased the mine, we can access the mine, and it'll prompt us with an option to pause the mine. Like maybe we don't want to consume any more pickaxes. So what happens if we pause the mine and then we go into town and we come back out? The game has to know that when we unpause everything, this was paused manually and it needs to stay paused. So I created a switch for when a thing is paused manually. If we've purchased the mine and we haven't paused it manually, then turn it back on. The same thing goes for anything else that has a manual pause mode. I haven't added a manual pause mode for anything except for the things that require a resource. 
resource because I don't see the need to. Why would you not want to be making more resources if it's not costing you anything? Here's some code that I've used with map ID. I've encapsulated all the timers. Instead of, in the previous episode, how I've handled it is on the transfer event, I check to see if we purchase these things and then I turn them back on when we leave town. But that's a very jank way of doing it because what if you teleport the player somehow or transfer event that doesn't hit that one specific transfer event? It could mess things up if you have like a teleport menu or something. I've updated every timer parallel to check the player's ID. When we initialize the game, I'm turning on a player tracker switch. This player tracker switch is going to track the player. It's going to take the player's X, the player's Y, the player's map ID, and the region that the player's on and store all of those into their own variable. This is going to give me extra data on the players. I can say if the players in this spot do this, but they're, if they're not in this spot, do that or don't do this, right? So now I can say if the player is on the world map, run the mine timer. If the player is not on the world map, then don't do anything or actually turn the timer off. So if the player is on map two, then it does all this. Else, turn this off so we don't have an empty parallel doing nothing and locking up the game. It turns the mine timer off. At any point in the game, if mine timer is on, we purchase the mine and we don't have it paused. If the player's on the world map, then we check to see if the player has a pickaxe. If the player has a pickaxe, then we're going to start our timer. So if all of these conditions are met, then it's going to be taking away 60 on that variable every second, once for every frame that goes by. If the variable gets over 1,200, which is 20 seconds, then we're going to control a variable and see if we lose a pickaxe. We're going to do this at the beginning. Before, I had this at the bottom, but because I want to show how many resources we have remaining, I need to take away an item before I award an item and let the player know that they got that item to not be one behind, because otherwise it'll say you have 10 pickaxes remaining, but it actually showed you right before it took one away. So it'll tell you you have 10, but you really have nine. So I put this at the top. So now we're doing our random check to see we're rolling a random number between one and 100. If that rolls low enough, we lose a pickaxe. Then we're gonna control a variable and set the variable pickaxe count to the number of pickaxes the player has. We go to game data and we set that up that way. Then we're going to do the rarity check on random one to 100 to see what we get out of that mine. If we get 75 or above, we get an ore, show the balloon icon, turn the switch for redundant on, and also prep it so that Gabtex says that we have got item number two, which is ore, and we have the variable 11, which we stored here, the number of pickaxes or remaining. So the number and then item icon is one because that's pickaxe. Then we jump to label redundant and redundant runs the animation. It plays the gab sound, the, the cup clack, the whatever from the coffee cup. Then we force gab, which actually makes it do that. We control the mine timer back to zero so it starts over and we turn the switch off so that it doesn't run redundant condition the next frame until it's told to jump to it and turn the switch back on. Otherwise, if it didn't roll below 75 or 75 or below, then it's going to see if it rolled 95 or below. Then it's going to do all the same things except instead of or, it's going to give you coal. The item icon is now two and the variable is, it's going to tell you you recovered coal and you have this many pickaxes remaining. Jump, the same thing. If we scored really high on that random roll, it's going to award a diamond to the balloon, jump to the thing, do all the other stuff just like it did in the other two and tell us that we've got a diamond and we have this many pickaxes remaining. At the end, where it's going to control mine timer one off if we don't have a pickaxe. If we don't have a pickaxe, it's going to turn mine timer off. And if we are not on map ID two, which is the world map, it's going to turn it off. So that's how I've updated mine timer. That's the most complicated one, but it's not that complicated really. Like I said, I've encapsulated all of these timer parallel processes with requiring the world map beyond. So this, even the starting town timer. So we're not going to be getting gold from the town taxes and consuming rations while we're in town. If we're on the world map and we have a food ration, then start the timer and add one to it. If it gets over 10 seconds, consume a food ration, then store the remaining amount of food rations into a variable. Prepare the gab window with the sound, a text, reference the variables. We have to store them before we reference them so that they're up to date. We have to take away and then check the variable so that we show it and not at the bottom. We have to do all that at the top. Take the items, then you give the items in that order. Show the balloon, give the gold, show the sound effects, the animation, make all of the gab stuff happen. Set the variable, the timer back to zero. If we don't have food rations, turn off the town timer. If we're not on the world map, turn off the town timer. The meat bar, like I said, the only thing I updated was adding some gab window stuff on the last minute. Like, hey, don't let your character starve. It's the last minute warning on that one. Consume food has been changed as well. It's not a simple event anymore. I've set the clamp on consuming food itself. If we use our food and we're going to control some variables, I want the player to know how many they have left. I'm putting that amount in the variable itself. This is the consume food for when the player uses the item from the inventory. I don't need to change items here because in order to call this common event, common event five, the player has to consume an item. The item has already been consumed.
consume. I can just set the current number of food rations to food ration count variable. Also award the, a set amount to the meat bar timer so that we feed our character and the bar goes up. If it exceeds the maximum value, then clamp it at the maximum value. Here's the process I went through to let the player know what percentage of that bar is currently filled. I've created a new variable and set it to zero, food bar percentage. Then I've added the current value of meat bar timer to it, which should be something under 36,000. I've divided that number by 360. I could have divided it by the maximum number, which is 36,000, and then multiplied that number by 100, but I just did both of those in one calculation. I've divided food bar percentage by 360, referenced that variable inside a show text, and added a percent at the end of it. It will let the player know what percentage of the bar is filled up. II is the item icon for item number 12. Variable 16 is the number of food rations we have remaining. Variable 17 is the percentage of the food bar that they have. The farm timer is the same just as the quarry. The farm, quarry, and fish timer have been updated in a very similar manner in that they've been encapsulated in another conditional checking the player's map ID to see if they're on the world map to be running. Nothing else has been changed between those. The common event menu, I'm using Yanfly's common event menu, and right now I have the town monument, the traveling merchant, and the kitchen being called with call town menu. If we look at the town monument, I'm setting the menu's name. I'm referencing actor number two since that's where we're storing the name of the town. As the player renames the town, it will also rename it in the common event menu. I've selected an icon for it and a picture for it. This monument C does not match the monument E that I'm using inside the game, but I'm going to change the one that I'm using monument E to monument C because I think it looks better. I've added the help description and the subtext. And how you do this is you just go to comment and you add a comment. This is to set up the menu. Right now, it will do nothing if we select on it, but if we wanted to do something, like say we wanted it to be able to rename the town from anywhere, we can input the things down here. Let's do that real quick. If I go to the village building system, I can copy this page and just run this page on the common event. Right here, when they select this, this town is named this. Would you like to rename the town? If you rename the town, then it'll let you rename the town from here. I kind of want the player to have to go into the town to rename it, so I'm not going to put this stuff here. Another reason why I don't want to put this here is because when we show choices inside the common event menu, it actually lets the player walk around while there's a show choice being present. To circumvent that, which is what I had to do for the kitchen event, the best way to go about this is to control a switch to have an auto run process for when that switch happens. Shout out to T for helping me with this. Go subscribe to her channel. Do it. When we use this option in the common event menu, it'll just turn on a switch and then the menu ends. But we have an auto run happening when this switch is on. So as soon as this switch gets turned on, the menu ends, this happens, it stops the player from going up and down and moving while you're making your selection, which is great because now the player will stop in place and you can make your selection without moving around on the map. This is another event that was created. This is just a show choice that says hire chef and lets the player know that we're going to be getting five food rations and consuming one meat every three minutes. And the sushi chef is the same except it's consuming one raw fish every three minutes. The other options are fire a chef, fire a sushi chef, or make no change. Defaulting to five and cancel to five. Now you may be wondering why do we have two switches, chef hired and kitchen chef timer on? It seems a little redundant that we need to have both of these. And I thought so at first too, but it really makes it easy to have two switches to control when the event gets paused, but you don't want to fire the chef. Like you still want to have your chef hired, but you ran out of meat and you want him to continue working automatically as soon as you get raw meat. This is why we have two switches. And how that works is our global controller. If the chef hired is on and the party has raw meat, it's going to turn the timer on. And the timer is the thing that controls this right here. But right now I haven't created the sushi chef timer, but we can do that real quick. I'm going to copy the kitchen chef and paste this. This is going to be kitchen sushi chef. And what we're going to be doing is replacing all instances of raw meat with raw fish. We also need to change the timer that it's using kitchen sushi chef timer instead of kitchen chef timer. So we need to change this variable to kitchen sushi chef timer, which we haven't created yet. And check that variable to see if it's above the right amount. Right now the variable is set to 1080, which is 18 seconds instead of 10,800, which is three minutes, so that I can debug it so it runs faster. I don't have to wait so long. We're gonna change the change items to consume raw fish instead of raw meat. And we're going to update this from raw meat count to raw sushi count. We need to change the maximum number of our variables. We're definitely gonna be using quite a few. This will be our raw fish count and set it to the game data item number of raw fish in the inventory. 
Food ration can stay the same. We need to create a different sound effect for when we create food rations with fish. <laughs> Perfect. It's supposed to be a cow. I'm going to update that, probably. How does sushi sound? <laughs> All right, so now I need to update this. We have, we're still producing the same thing, food rations. Well, we're not consuming item five now. We're consuming item eight, which is our raw fish. Force the gab and reset the timer, not kitchen chef timer, kitchen sushi chef timer. Set that back to zero. If we do not have raw fish, then we need to turn off the switch kitchen sushi chef timer. So we have a variable and a switch with the same name. Variable is the number thing and switch is just on or off. Now our sushi chef and our chef at the kitchen will be available to hire. When we call our common event with this, we're using plugin commands to call this. And I've bound common event 13 to a button using Yadfly's button common events. The player presses E, it's going to call common event 15, which is going to eat food. If they press T, it's going to open up the town menu. I need to go into the game and change monument E to Monument C because I think it will look better. I'm gonna press F10 in the game here and I'm gonna edit my doodads. Edit monument. I'm actually gonna delete this doodad. Return to the layer list. Finish my edit. Place a new doodad. I'm gonna go to structures. Select monument C. Go to here and place this just like so. And then I will press escape, escape, escape. I'm going to edit my doodads. Edit monument C. Require that this switch village building be on right click, accept my settings. Actually, I wanna change the hue to a little bit of a greener hue to match. I will accept my settings now, return to layer list, finish my edit, save and close. There we go. And it still works the same. I'm going to change this event so that it doesn't block the player from right here now, because it doesn't need to. We can do that. Getting rid of this same as character blank event, just deleting that. And I'm looking for kitchen art, maybe like figuring out where we should put it, so that I can set it up with the doodads and have like a kitchen right here, a sushi bar, a bar and grill type thing. Also thinking about setting up farms so that you can specify what you want to grow in farms. I've got a ton of ideas and you guys are providing me with some good ideas. We've made a ton of progress in this episode. Massive amount of work has gone into the game today. Lots of changes have happened. Tons of quality of life changes have been implemented. I like where this project is going. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate your sub. If you would like to support the channel, it'd be very appreciated if you visit patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming and backing me on Patreon. If you'd like to support what I do here and you like these videos to continue. If you'd like to come hang out and chat with us, we have a link to the Discord server in the description box below. Below. click on that link that's gonna do it for this video thank you guys leave your comments below if you'd like to make suggestions for future episodes stay awesome guys we'll see you in the next one bye bye